Welcome back to Talking Transitions. Today's guest is former Evan Academy player, Luke Powell, or as everyone likes to call him now, Shredfast. Luke, what was it like coming through at Evan Academy? Uh, it was good. I enjoyed I enjoyed my time there a lot. It seemed to get better as time went on. So when I, I joined when I was 13, and I was really like insecure at that age, so I didn't have much confidence at all. I grew into myself during my Evan years, so it probably wasn't until I was just peaking in terms of my character and self-esteem and confidence as I got let go, you know what I mean? So I enjoyed it, I learned a lot there, made some great friends we were still in contact with now. My best friends, in fact, my two best friends, Shane Duffy and Conor Mahalini. So met them, wouldn't change it for the world. Massive, massive, massive lessons learned in that period of my life. But looking back in retrospect, I always just wish I'd have been a bit more confident in my ability and then would have been interesting to see where it went. I'm absolutely, I made up that it didn't work out because the life path I'm on now. But I do think I had a lot more potential than I probably showed. What you've gone on to do now with like your mentality and your mindset changing. Mm. Do you think if you had the mindset, what you've got now, your football career might have been different? Yeah. Well, I know it would. That, that That's a fact it would have, but it's all well and good saying that, isn't it? Everything's, everything's like that in retrospect. You can say, oh, if, if, if I'd have knew this now, I would have done X, Y, Z because you learn as you go. But yeah, I know it would have been because my problem all the way through childhood was just thinking what other people thought and being judged, not being confident in myself or who I was. I was always constantly trying to prove a point to someone. I didn't even know who, do you know what I mean? But the more time's gone on, the more I've learned about human psychology and myself and know why that was now. And I, it, it, it's revealed a lot of, I was about to ask then, what, what, what was it that you, you can obviously was, look back at? It was say. definitely not having a, um, a dad, not having a father figure. I feel like a lot of young men who don't have a dad growing up have, have a chip on the shoulder that's trying to prove themselves. I always wanted that validation from an older male. I that's coming up a lot, isn't it, for like the, yeah. the last few guests? Mm. Not having a father figure as being key. That's the thing, and it sounds cliche, but I always say this, lad, and in today's age, with Google and with that much information going about, it's no longer what you say now, it's how you say. So you probably get every single person on the podcast who's doing well for themselves, young lad, yeah. who's gonna say the same thing I am, but it's it's your story behind it, it's how you say it, it's your character. So I do feel like it, it is near enough all the same. It, it always stems from a place of trauma or um, I've, like lack, you come from lack and you yeah. want abundance. It, it usually stems from the same things, doesn't it? Do you think that's men in general? Pe men who've come from uh, a tough upbringing, yeah. I can't see how it doesn't. You go one or two ways, don't you? I reckon as Liverpool as well, as in general, is like as a lad going up in Liverpool is quite tough and you have that like ego come from Liverpool and obviously I can't speak about other cities and towns and all that, but I think lads in Liverpool in general are a bit like that. Ego. Like the, yeah, ego and like, maybe putting on like a character that they have to, to, to fit in as well. Maybe something that they're not, mm. but they have to, to, to fit in as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I, de like, I, I definitely see that. And the happiest I've ever been in my life is now, the last few years, and that's through not doing that. Yeah. Like, I don't care what you don't care what thinks. Anyone thinks. Like, you can talk well and good saying it, isn't it? But when you actually don't, yeah. I feel like it, it comes out here, it oozes out here. And, you, when you're comfortable with who you are, you make everyone else in the room feel comfortable. You make your team feel comfortable. You make your customers feel comfortable if you've got a business. So when you're comfortable with who you are and you speak the truth, good things will start to happen. And I feel like that's what's starting to happen. You know, me. when you said that you weren't comfortable uh, or confident in yourself back then, what was you like physically? Because obviously looking at you now, physically in mad shape, but what was you I like I was always then? skinny. So I was always like lean. I, I, Used to have a thing with my cousins, and they'd be like, it's, "You can see your ribs." I was like, "To me, abs, you know." Yeah. <laughs> Trying to say it was my obliques, but it was definitely my ribs. I was dead skinny, low body fat, quick, like fast, proper yeah. fast. I could run quick. I was strong, proper strong as well, strong as a knock for like me, me size and me weight. But yeah, I was always physically. Thing was with me, I w I went the hardest in school or anything like that by any means. But no one like Said no one to fuck with us. Like I, I was left to do it but in a sense I was bullied slightly and when I look back now so I was saying to you and I the yeah. other day I used to get called West Brown but I hated it I hated that I got called West Brown obviously mixed ice ginger 
That was the. Are you ginger? Thing, yeah, ginger lad. So, yeah, like, I got that. That's what he always yeah. had was that little running joke. And now it's water off a duck's back. Yeah. But back when I was 12, 11, 12, 13. You little red head. Yeah, it used to get me. <laughs> it used to get me, but yeah. like, and, and a prop used to get me down. Like, literally, I think back now, why did it? But you're the kid, aren't you? It's mad in school, getting called a red head. And that yeah. used to kill you. Dad, honestly, it's used to just kill you. I've got mates who got ginger hair. I feel sorry for them, man. <laughs> you should get hammered all the time just for having red hair. It's yeah, but you've probably had the same dis- dis- discrimination yeah, for being small. Yeah, I'm you. Yeah. I, That's I, what I'm saying. You, know you what, all get always, it. You know what I always remember, actually? A midget never used to bother me. Like, the size yeah. has never been a f- thing for me. I've never been asked. But a girl said to me one time in school, shut up, you look like the um, champ- or the FA Cup trophy or something like that because of my spiky ears. And I'll never forget that. I was gutted. It sticks with you, doesn't it? Yeah. It does, though. The I had fancy things. there as well. That was out of order, though. <laughs> what did you say? I had fancy there as well. So it was out of order. <laughs> These things stick with you, but I'm saying you. I got called a monkey in school, and this is before I knew I had black hair to Jimmy. Yeah. And I was in a predominantly white school, old swan, uh, St. Oswald. So we're all there, and for some reason, everyone started saying what? people what animal people look like and this guy is like oh my god he looks like a monkey but then it was like oh my god he does and then the next minute everyone's knocking each other and like he does yeah. and then i'm looking at myself i remember going on that night looking at myself thinking why do i look like a monkey i was about nine years old yeah because my dad weren't there who's black you didn't see those racism he would have been like what he'd have told yeah. me why i was being called that where does my mum's going you don't you don't look like a monkey not saying listen yeah. you've got black in yeah that's something that Black people get called yep. to discriminate, but et cetera. But she I she, didn't have that. Do you think she... I don't think she even knew. Yeah, she don't, say, bro, yeah. I don't think she, like, I don't think she even knew with that. Yeah. To be yeah. honest, I don't think, um, I don't think my mum... It's hard to handle those mom. situations, isn't it? Yeah, do you know what I mean? So, sorry, back to the question, what you said, like, yeah, physically, um, if if anyone did sign, like, mess around me, I'd lock on that when you're the kid, I'd always, yeah. like, deal with them. But um, I did get... I got a bit of I got a bit of stick, you know what I mean? So that that's what sent me confidence down. Yeah, so at Evan Academy, then what age did you finish down? How did you deal with 13 to 18? So you so, team after you've teamed yeah, didn't get the pro. me pro. Didn't get me pro. Um didn't oh. deal with it great at yeah. the start, obviously. It it was hard to take that towards you know, isn't it? So it told you've ever known is football since you was a kid. So I'm, I took it hard at first, but then I just quickly distracted myself. That's the best word I can use to describe like eight years of my life from that point was just distracting. Just distracting myself by any means possible. Going out, doing all the wrong things, getting into trouble with the wrong people. Just, I always say like a loose cannon, but it doesn't even do it justice. I was just absolutely like off the rails fully for about seven, eight years, do you know what I mean? And do you think that was just because your, your, your football team was over or? When I say football, not specifically football, just me thinking I was going to be something and then not being. So, just, I promised my mum the word, I promised my family the word. Every time you see, like, your uncle's mates and that, who, who, who they used to always be telling about he's going to be a footy player. Like, the and football. And then it's like, he's still playing footy. It's like, no. Next person asks, no. And it's like, breaking it to all these people that you're not going to be it's who hard, you thought you was going to be, yeah, bro. So, yeah, lived in the shadow of who I thought I was going to be for a, l- a long time and chose to mask that by doing all the wrong things, like I say, just distracting myself, keeping busy, you know, like a busy fool. I think I know the answer to this because obviously your, your mates are still your best mates now. But other people from the outside could see it may be, might have been harder for you because your best mates are still playing football and they've gone on to do Unbelievable and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I know you obviously... You've got no envy towards them whatsoever because they're no. still your best mates. Yeah. I know that, but was that harder at any point or did it help it's good, you? It's a good question that, that no one's ever really spun it like that, but I was only speaking about this the other day with me mates. Do you know all those little small uh, situations like you're referring to there? They're what's helped me build my character and my belief and it made me like myself for who I am because... I know I'm a good person because I genuinely was only ever happy yeah. for me, mates. Like, lad, I just celebrate people's wins. Like, when people do well in whatever they do, and I'm genuinely happy for them. Not, like, pretending to be with a slight bit of envy. Like, I'm talking, celebrating, like, I've won the World Cup when, when they I'd watch Connor score a goal yeah. or Duffy score a goal or I went to watch Duffy play for his country in Lyon. He played France in the Euros. He got sent off. I don't yeah. know if you remember that game. 
Do if you got sent off and I was there with his mum and dad, his mum and dad would be behind me crying out, I was crying my eyes out myself, watching them stood there with the national anthem on, like, that, I, I couldn't have been happy for me mates. Um, I think that's why I'm experiencing the success I am now, yeah. because I was so happy to see other people succeed. And so, on shade, to be fair, like, I remember going out with you years ago when we was probably, like, 18 and all that, but Duffy will be grateful for people like you in his life as well because yeah, yeah. You've, you've helped him become the person he is, in, in my eyes, I think, as well, because yeah. he was an unbelievable player, but he was an absolute great lad, yeah. but it was because he was around good good lads as well. Boss, he and was. He was always good stuff. He, he was in a scouts but playing for Everton, like, there was a group of them, like, we were all scouts, but Duffy fitted in Dave out goalie as well. We were in yeah, a scouts, yeah. really, but, like, they fitted into the... Your your friendship group and that must have made them feel comfortable and yeah. helped them grow as well. Well, Duffy made the reason we're like we are best mates is um, the, his second game that he was playing. We were on we were on the fifth under sixteens at the time. He was coming over from when he was still in school, coming over one day a week. Or yeah, I think he was coming over on a Thursday night and staying until a Sunday so we could play the match on a Saturday for the under sixteens. And no one was giving him the time of day, and he got on the coach and I'd saved him a seat. You know what I mean? And he got on dead, like, timid. I said, yo, got your seat here, bro. Come sit next to me. And then we were playing Leeds away. And we just spoke. We ended up speaking about our nans. We were both dead close yeah. to our nans. I grew up with my nans, like, so we just spoke about our nans and how much we loved them, lad. And we just clicked from that day on then. And then he'd stay in mine. So we'd, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. my mum would say he'd stay in ours, but we'd either be out on the aisle, obviously. <laughs> um, and, he, and he'd stay in ours so that he could stay out the lodge. So we got to know my mum and my family, my nan, she'd, we'd go to there on a Sunday for the roast and that. So I just took him under my wing as a, a scout, so knowing that it must have been a big thing to come away at that age, it's man. It's, you know what I mean? If you're 14, 15 years old, just being saying that the type of person I was at that age, like he's moving country. Yeah. So yeah, took him under my wing, same with Connor. And we've stayed tight ever since. You know, when you said um, about distracting yourself, mm. we spoke again, with previous guests about that transition from fuzzy and obviously not knowing what you're going to do, etc. Mm -hmm. So in those seven years that you was kind of distracting yourself, did you always have a vision of wanting to succeed and do what you've done now? Or what What was always, your mindset at that point? You know always I mean? wanted to be successful, yeah. bro. Like, always I wanted, I wanted abundance. I wanted to be that guy. I wanted to be successful. I wanted people to... Like the football, like I used to go to sleep at night dreaming of can't wait till I'm a footy player and people are like that. You're part of a footy player. Like I wanted that's what you want as a kid. You want that recognition. So I always wanted to be successful. I always wanted to to do something with my life. But in terms of vision, I was just very distorted at that time. I can't really put myself back in there because I don't even know who that person was anymore, really, man. Like it was like I've let that side of me go so much. It's very hard to go back there now. I know he always wanted it, but I don't think I believed I was going to get there. I think I just thought I'm going to be this little hood rat. Like, I'm just going to just be, I'm gonna turn bit. me back on the way. That was my vision. Yeah. Not like not in works out. I've come from shit and I'm going to be shit, but I'm going to like do it this way and that way. And just thought I was that, that guy. And I just wasn't, lad. I just wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't me. Just living a lie. Understand? We all evolve, though, don't we? Do you know what I mean? We 100%. All have, we all evolve. Like, who you are 10 years from now will be different to who you are now. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I feel like who you are is when you're like seven, eight years old. Do you reckon that that's when you gain consciousness yet? That's when you, like, you probably your first memory might be around that time, like maybe five, six, seven. When you're in and around that age, your character, I think that's who you are. And I believe life is a full circle back to that. And when you get back to that, that's who you are, like that's where things start to happen, that's where the magic happens when you're just back in touch with you. So like, you I was a compassionate young lad who just loved his family, just loved to play. Yeah. And now I'm back there, bro, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. after all the distraction, I'm back there now, just living my life in, in like, f like having fun with it, man. Just honestly, like I'm, I'm, when I'm working, I'm working, when I play, I play, but I mean, in terms of who I am, when I sit there at night and think everything's going well and this is going good, I'm just, I'm, I feel so blessed and I feel like back when I was a kid, yeah. I just feel like I'm that person again. I feel like I'm so compassionate and loving and caring and I've got a lot of time for the right people. And I went through transition, as you said there, where 
that wasn't I wasn't that person. I was someone different. Do you know what I mean? But you sounds like you're uh, like everything you do is for your family. Yeah. Um, there was a time where you was acting someone like you weren't, mm. and you was being someone you weren't, getting yourself in trouble, mixing with the wrong crowds and all that. Mm. And it was a key moment in your life where someone in your family like had the words and said, "If you don't change, yeah. then you're not going to be able to see your your niece and your nephews or yeah, your gods." Man. Yeah. You got kids. Yeah. So, yeah, I got it. I got in deep. I got in like well over my head with a situation uh, where I'd been fighting and just got into a, a lot of trouble with it. It was, it was, it was heavy on. So, again, we're not going into too much detail. That like just that kind of was a pivotal moment because my sister came up and said, "Listen, you you can't see the kids. I've got two uh, godsons." Who, who will worship the guy and he walk on and love them to bits still to this day, going away with them on Sunday. Yeah. Take them everywhere to go. I take them everywhere with me, do you know what I mean? So, um, she said, yeah, you can't see it. And my mum was like, listen, you, like, you might have to move out. I was living with my mum at the time, I was only 19. Yeah, I just felt like, wow, all, all my world was closing in. And then I, with that whole situation, where they just said there, I thought to myself, I'll be the man, I'll be this. I soon realized that I wasn't the man and I had no backup. I had no one around me who really cared about me. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had, I didn't have all these, the way a lot of people grow up and they've got the boys around them tight and they're yeah. all about that life. I just wasn't. All my mates play footy and yeah. that. I'm the same. To get me, bro. Yeah. So I was left in the shit, yeah. hung out to dry. So, um, all praise be to God, lad. Things worked out in my favor and things got sorted out and God gave me a second chance. And from that moment, it's, started to try and be better definitely wasn't better though by the way because like yeah. i say that was only 19 i still was a I still, still was young round, i still was around the bend up until about 25 26. Yeah. can you give us some context on what what it was that kind of triggered your sister into kind of saying those words to you because obviously you they, said, it was putting them in danger i was right, putting okay. me, i was putting them in danger if they were to be with me that they were in danger yeah. you know what i'm saying so so your sister obviously didn't want the she's like you're not kids, taking a bowl and yeah, you're not, yeah. they, they, would, they were five and six and that at this time yeah so it was at the time i was taking them to the match taking them to with a bit of food taking them to there being that older brother because yeah. to, again to give a context me auntie is basically my sister because we grew up in my nans together we shared the room together till i was 10. Yeah. She, she was on the top bunk me and my mum on the bottom bunk you know what i mean so she was more a sister than an auntie and it's her children so they're like my little brothers, do you get me? They're not like my cousins, they're like the family to me, like, they're like brothers. So she just said, nah, you won't be able to obviously do this with them, do that with them, like you're gonna have to take a step back from them. And how like, did you do that. how did you basically change that mindset to way, or what did you do differently to try um, and get? I promised them that I was gonna be out of all that. I yeah. wasn't like, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, you gotta take me word for it, like I'm, I'm, I'm Nothing's gonna ever happen again, I promise you. I'm, I'm, I'm back on the straight and narrow, etc. And then I had to just prove with my actions, do you know what I mean? Just trying to be better, got a job in home and back. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I was a member that at the top of this one. So lasted two days. Huh? Well, you went to home back for two went days? Went back and got a job for two days, yeah. And then just, I was like, can't do this. So I was always trying, do you know what yeah. I mean? I'd always try. And again, that proves to me that I was a good person because yeah. at least I was trying. Uh, do you know what I mean? I was giving it a go. Feel so, like, yeah, because you was in such a like a physical sport for so long, going Definitely. into something like pack, packing shelves and stuff, like, it just didn't resonate with you. At Even all. if I, I hadn't been in a physical sport for so long, I'm a physical person, I'm very like high energy, got my brains under miles an hour. I'm always wanting to do stuff, I, I don't get tired, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm still buzzing right up until about nine, ten o'clock, and then it is a I'm out like a light, then but. I just needed something that fulfilled that energy, that, that circulating in me, you know what I mean? Like, I've spoke with a few psychologists and that, and the, the, the reference to me as a, a a generator, like I'm a generator of energy. Some people are like an absorber of energy and this yeah. and that. You're uh, an energizer? Yeah, like I got called that last I, week, I, 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 create, I create that energy yeah. and then I, I like, I have to fuel it out, otherwise yeah. it's, it's in there like a, oh, I'm just shaking like a, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like a tumble dryer, lad. If it doesn't get out, you got it. I've got to let it out. So, yeah, I I needed the job that was gonna allow me to do that. So, guessing that was obviously personal training. Yeah. So then that's how I fell into that. So I'm, I was living at home, and I just I thought just give it a go. I was watching. Remember all them the black guys used to be in in, in America on the bars. 
Yeah, yeah. Color statics, is it? Yeah, yeah. the color statics that I got obsessed with that. And then I was like, I want to. I want to have a go with that, so I started going to Otter's Pool, you know where the red yeah, bars was. Yeah. I was. I always remember one of my first ever videos on Instagram was me doing like, like I started at the bottom and pulled myself up and then was doing like jumping from one bar to the next and that and got a little bit of traction from that and then was PTing, taking people to that park. I always remember PT, I was PTing for a five and an hour yeah. in that park and it cost me a tenner to get there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I lived in Old Swan obviously. So, I'm, I'd, I'd just done that, yeah, and was just trying to make ends meet, but I was just trying to get a bit of money behind me and get out my mums, and then, yeah, that's how I started. I went and done a PT course, and uh, the PFA paid for that, which, yeah. you, which you'll get onto. So the PFA paid for that, the Professional Football Association, obviously, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, but they they funded that for me, got me qualification, and went from there, yeah. Just we might as well get onto that then. So yeah. a few people have been coming on. Mm. giving the PFA a bit of shit saying that they can do more for everyone and stuff like that and yeah. I know obviously you um, think differently to that so yeah give your thoughts on it well like I said to you before I I, I just think I, I, how much help do you do, do you want how much help do you need uh, as I said to you before as well they're not they're not your parents they don't actually owe you anything well, why why did these people feel like they're owed something from the PFA no if, if I mean they paid bills for me when I was proper struggling like five six hundred pounds i remember on a phone bill and they've paid for mri scans since they're paying for another one this week they've paid for me personal training course they're being good but what what more do you actually want do, i agree do, do you want to be them fair. To, do you, like you know what i mean do you want to be spoon fed yeah do, 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 what they don't know you nothing no yeah no, you, what you, i would you, say you, with that look, obviously yourself. in that situation you had a passion for like you as you say you had energy so mm-hmm. you had a passion for pt and do you know what i mean yeah. so um I don't think that they don't do enough, but I think that there could be more variety of options or maybe because there might be other people out there who want to do something totally different than what, what they've been used to, do you know what I mean? So and you don't feel like much help in that. Area. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's hard, isn't it? Because when you're playing football, you have to focus 100% on football. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. might have other passions that you are really, you know, interested in. How do you... But imagine, explore them while you're playing football well, do you know what i mean all right so i get it because we're kids aren't we so we go straight from that before we can really make a decision so our parents basically make the decision don't you go into everton you're yeah. signing your pro they probably do all that for you yeah but then when you're 18 19 and you leave it's still been your decision to have pursued that for that long once you're 16 17 you can you, you, you become a man you can say i don't want to play anymore i said that numerous times yeah one of the reasons I probably got released because it was up and down and my motivation had gone from days so I don't want to play for it no yeah. more. So you have the choice. Now imagine this in a different context. Imagine me pursuing personal training, but gone. There should be something set up for you for if I don't like personal training in three years' time. There should be a little government fund set up here now that provide money for me. If I decide after three years, I'll put all my energy into PT yeah. and I don't like it anymore. Where's my dog? Who's helping me? On the like, flip side, it could be not that you don't like it. It's the fact that you fell out like many people do. Mm-hmm. You do you, you do love it, but, but you, you fell out and you're now in the wilderness a little bit. Um, that's my only thought process behind it. Do you know I, I, mean? I, I get it, but well, it's the risk you're taking. Yeah, it's, yeah. The, it's, it's, it's the 1% making, isn't it? What, what is the percentage that make it? I don't know. Clear, but I think but it, dies every, it dies every five let's years, say one, let's, say, let's say 1%, you've got to be in that elite level. I think you make that decision as a young child to pursue football. Like, this is my dream. And unfortunately... Not everyone's dreams come to fruition. And I think for them to try and to try and help every single young lad in this city, in this country, um once they stop pursuing their dream is unrealistic. And it will won't really teach them much. It won't give them much independency. It won't allow them to go away, deal with their own traumas, deal with the fact that they failed and build up the courage and the character to go again at something else. I don't think by someone putting their arm around you and going, okay, we'll, we'll do this for you, we'll do that for you. You're going to just be like the blind leading the blind a bit because you probably still don't know what you want. Then you've got to go on a bit of a journey, make a few mistakes, fuck up. You know what I mean? Like fucking put your life in the shit and then get yourself out if you really want to be successful because I'm a massive believer that trauma breeds success. Massive believer in that. So if everything's always sugarcoated for you, if everything's wrapped in cotton wool, if you've always got an answer from the PFA and you've always got an answer from your dad and you've always got an answer from your family and your friends, then you're never going to experience those traumas that are going to 
prepare you for, for life. Well, once you start getting into business and all the kid you had in before, I'm not on his level just yet. But trust me, lad, it's graft. Do you know what I mean? I just, just know yourself. It, it, it's, it's Nothing's hard. given on the plates, is it? No, yeah. bro, it's hard. You're competing. You're competing in a, in a, in, 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 in a society that there's, there's people who, who are willing to die to win. Yeah. And that's who you're competing against. And I just feel like if you do really want to be successful, you've got to go out on your own a little bit. Well, you have yeah. grafted, um, and what you've, we'll get on to now, what you're doing now. But I can remember coming to do sessions with you in an apartment, yeah. and we were doing sessions in the kitchen living room, and yeah, then making me fucking do runs up and down the stairs in the, in the apartment <laughs> block and all that. that. Do you know what I mean? I but was laughing bro, when like, you said that. Yeah, it, it's it's mad because to see now, I, you probably forgot about it, didn't you? When I told I you, I did. I yeah. forgot. I remember the change. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot that you done in the flat. In the flat I remember yeah. saying, "Yeah, I do." I, I know that. I've been doing fucking plank on the kitchen floor, mate. Do you know what? <laughs> My elbows are still fucked now. With sweat, with Connor there. <laughs> Connor was probably sitting there eating a bag as next to you, lad. Yeah, you know what? No, <laughs> no, 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 Connor just got back from my beef and he was he was Addy, fucking in bed. I do remember that yeah. a bit now, but I'd say in foreshore as well. Yeah, yeah. Adam foreshore. I, I actually one of me. No, it was my first ever picture on Instagram. Still in my archive yeah. is Adam Foreshore halfway through a crunch on my living room floor yeah. in that flat. Do you know what's funny though? We've had a few guests on here yeah. and you've been close to being their first client. So that shows, shows that uh, he might have the similar characteristics as you. What's that? Say no, because I think we had um, Tom on, didn't we? And uh, Tom just being to America. Yeah, yeah. And he got back and he wants to start doing one on one training and all that. So we were training on like a fucking shitty little pitch before he's gone on to do whatever he's I'm done. Do you know what I mean? So, it, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, obviously, mates, and no matter where it was, I would have went and done it anyway. Do you know what I mean? It just happened to be you was doing it in the yeah, I do delivery room it, and it was fucking, it was sad. Was it pre season? It was pre season. So yeah, obviously, yeah. like, I wanted to try and get an extra. You went to park better. as well. Yeah. You went to Sefton Park and yeah. you done the lap of the park yeah. and you smashed it, yeah. didn't you? I always wanted to try and go back in pre-season as good as I could be. Yeah. And obviously, I'd done those sessions with you to get stronger. Mm. And yeah, I loved it. But I wouldn't, at the, at the time, there's not a chance you even thought that what we were doing, you was going to go on to do whatever yeah. you, you've done now. But that just shows like the graph that you put in. It does, you pay yeah. your dues. And what, you, when you was doing them sessions and when you started off, what like what were your dreams then? Was you thinking, I'm just doing this to just get a bit of money in? Like just, yeah, just paying? Yeah, thinking like, get me money up, get a few properties, start a business. Like, yeah. When I say, like, I don't know what I thought. I was like, I'll have my own business one day. That's what I'm telling me, bird. And that, like, yeah. I'll have my own business and I'll do this, mum, and I'll do that. I, I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know what I seen. I just thought, I just want success. I just want to be... I want to be able to wake up and do whatever I want to do on that day. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? That was just me. I wanted freedom. I just wanted to travel, be free, have a nice house, have a nice car, nice girl. Look kids. after your family. Yeah, and just look after all, 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 the, all the closest people to me. Like, I always have this vision of it being, I don't know what the best word is for it, like, a, like an empire. Yeah. Like I wanted to create my own empire within my little thing, like a, a group of solid men, a group of solid women, like my mum. My sister, or or me, uh, me, me nieces and nephews, me, me friends, me business partners, all in like a, a unity. I, I, because I didn't have that. No one has yeah. referred to before about when I got myself into trouble. I was laying in the hospital bed, and there was no one around. Lad, you could like it was literally like the the best analogy. Is like when you see the the thing roll tumbleweed. by, it's, yeah, tumbleweed. Just like I'm sitting there, just like wow, I've got no one. I've got, I've got people, I've got like my mum, my mum yeah. loves me to bits that, me, me sister doing the fair and too. I have people who love me, Connor and that. What can they do? Yeah. What can they do in a situation like that? I had no strong men. Like what? Like imagine that happened. You got kids. No. So you got children. Yeah, yeah. So imagine that happened to your, your, your child. Something, someone mm. put your child in hospital. You could like everything in your power you're going to do to resolve that matter, aren't you? But I, I didn't have that. Anyone doing yeah. that for me. I had no one who could protect me or look after me, give me advice, tell me what to do, tell me it's going to be okay. Um, I thought from that day on, I said to myself, I'm going to create a strong network of people now. I'm going to make sure that like, I'm okay. I'm going to make sure because I'm not a bad person. No. I don't want to go around doing bad things, but I want I want to be, feel safe and secure in myself and know that I'm okay and my family are okay and that we've got enough strong people around us to make sure that we're all okay when shit hits the fan. And that was my desire. That was this... When I started getting this vision, I just thought, yeah, I just want to create an empire, just yeah. a good, a good, like, humble empire built on truth and justice, like honesty, 
love. You know what I mean? I wanted that. At, and and that, that's what I started to At that to time, is that when you started doing the food, like the meal prep and all that? I remember no, you doing it was, that. It was years later. That, years later. that was uh, 2000 and 2015, 16, when I went from that gym that I was in when you were training with me to Rose Lane. Yeah. Sports Direct it was at the time, and they had a kitchen upstairs, and I started PT in there. And I bought into a franchise that was just a con. Got lent all my mum's redundancy money, put it all into this franchise. Failed after six months, put my own money in. Got all that took. Called it quits, scrapped it, but still had the kitchen for like another six months lease. So I was like, I'm gonna do here, what can I do? So I just started Evolve Fitness meal prep. Yeah. And just got this chef in and then, uh, Luckily enough, it started to do okay. Yeah. We ended up we were serving fifty people two meals a day at one point at its at its peak. Fifty five people we had on on um for a few weeks. And it done all right. It done it done well. So that was a good experience to get me idea of business, managing people. I'm failing, but then obviously yeah. trying to get back. And then I failed again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And what did you learn from that, Luke? From obviously I learned, business business perspective. You can't trust anybody when it comes to business. You can't you can't put all you trust, you know what I'm saying? You can't put all your eggs in one basket and give someone full control of a certain section of your business. You've always got to hold a bit of control if you want to grow. Do you understand what I mean? So in terms of food, just to, people might not understand what I mean there to give a, an example. If you've got a food, a healthy food place, you don't want to get a chef in and say, cook your own food because they hold the key to the business then. Yeah. So he's sitting there on his high horse. If I walk out, business is gone and he can do what he wants. And he, he literally did what he wants to the point where I wanted to literally strangle him, yeah. you know what I mean? And when he left, the food changes. So you need to hold some type of control. Do you understand what yeah. I mean? So with every any business I do now, I like to create systems yeah, where anyone, in place. Yeah. anyone can do that system. Yeah, yeah. You're not saying, you do your system, you do your system, you do it like this. You're saying, I want it done like this for yeah. my business. So I learned that. That was probably the biggest key point I took they, away from that. They say, don't they? There's, uh, there's no friends in football. Uh, half get it, half don't, because my two best mates are from football, your mates are from football, yeah. and all that. But going yeah. into business, is it like this similar kind of experience? That it need? is in the sense of, because you're saying there, your people in the business yeah. with you. You need to fucking trust them. They, they, like your teammates. Yeah. Like that put, I, I put me, I, I could trust them in my life. I've, I've got me right hand man, Joe. I trust him in my life. He, he'd take a bullet for me, he actually would. Yeah. But other competitors, other people in business, other people who were approaching you and saying, can I invest in it? Do you want to do this together? You can't trust them. Yeah. You can't they trust them as far as you can throw them. They just want You've just got to it. give people the benefits of the doubt, be open-minded and then secure yourself if you are going to go into talks with someone. What is it? What is it that like with Joe? Is he, is he uh, an employee? Is he or is he like? Yeah. So Joe was doing a program back in lockdown on online, and I met him at a family wedding. My girlfriend's wedding. Uh, my girlfriend's family was getting married to someone in his family. So it was like we met there, and he was like, "I do your program every day, Vardy. I love it." He's only dead young at the time. He's nineteen. He's only 24, 23 or twenty-four now. She was like nineteen, twenty, just dead young and immature. And he was like, can I come and do the sessions with you when you when you record them in the thing? And I was like, ah, give us a message and we'll see. And he just he got on me straight away to the point where he was doing me head in, <laughs> messaging me all the time. And he just showed, he was just like, ah, please let me come in, please. Came in, did it. He was working for Barclays at the time. So he'd have his laptop in the changes. He'd run in and touch the mouse and run back out and do a set, you know, to show he was working from home. So he was grafting just nonstop. And his loyalty is just unmatched as, as he... Uh, I've seen now in different situations, even like being one of the lads, he's like, he's, I've seen him stand on it for me when I thought, is it, is it, is it gonna go yeah. off here a little bit? And I've seen him step forward instead of step back and he's just done so many things. And I'm just like- Did I, you I, see a little bit of you in him boy. as a younger lad? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Just that like hunger, eagerness. Energy. But yeah, misdirected the passion. Yeah. He just didn't know what he wanted to do or where he was heading. But he wanted to do but something. He wanted to do something. Yeah. So are you- like, you should, obviously we touched on before you're not having a father figure yeah are you trying to adopt that role for him now yeah he's got an amazing father though john he's like unbelievable yeah. uh, like proper solid man like got so much respect for him so he's had that but it's just always great to, i'm like his older brother yeah. Yeah, more yeah. than his father i'd say yeah you know what i mean i'd never try and replace that that role but uh, in in terms of what he wants to achieve in life 
um, I'm, I'm playing that role model for for that section of his life. But he's had an amazing upbringing, like unbelievable. Yeah. His, his family are amazing. Man. I guess obviously you've got that life experience as well, as you say, his parents have as well. But yeah. you've got that life experience of maybe failing a little bit as well. Yeah, exactly. And then also now coming out and being successful. It, yeah, like his dad's life, you know, got into a, a job role where it was very like corporate. Like yeah. he's done this and done that, yeah. very regimental. And he's just, he's, he's brilliant. He's travel aware. Yeah. He's, he's well off. He bought his house. He sees some good models. He's, he's amazing in every way. Just not, he's just never owned a business or he's never failed drastically at something, for example, saying jo- Joe just likes to look to me for that, that side yeah. of things. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm happy to oblige, but I always get a bit, I'm a bit reserved when, when people would say like, the, the, the a father figure or an older brother because I used to say it to Mark all the time yeah. we were speaking about before I used to say to Scanlon all the time he's like you're like the older brother but and he always go like that like, I'm not I'm not because it's it's a lot of responsibility to take isn't it mm. when someone says yeah. I aspire to be like you it's like oh, no, lad, I've I can't make a mistake now man now. yeah I've got to make good moves on the chessboard now because he's gonna follow me yeah. so but do you it's know great. what? It's great. It calls me accountable. I've, 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 I've switched, switched my perspective. But it's on good that, that people are even thinking about looking at you like that, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is that. It, 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 it's, I don't think testament. anyone can look at me as a big brother because I'm fucking too small. But <laughs> I always try and be the best person I can be and give advice and always, always go my way to help guy. people and be a nice person. But and no one's ever said to me, "You like me, big brother, John." <laughs> Maybe not. I don't, maybe not hinging up. I know. Yeah. Are you glad? I'm pretty sure you will have had that in footy. No, nah, I haven't footy, mate. You've had that the, in footy. I know you have because yeah. they don't just don't look up to me. You took yourself off to Thailand, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, can I you tell know. us a little bit about that? Obviously, Ta- what yeah. you go for? So I went for the fight camp. So I had fought. I I was saying in MMA. And this isn't this isn't like getting at anyone. By the way, when I say this, but I trained at MMA Academy for two years, like four times a week, one to ones with Mike Warren, absolute champion. Big yeah. shout out to him. But I wanted to fight. And um, I'd mentioned to him a few times, he was just like, maybe you're not ready yet. But yeah. like, I was, I felt good, do you know what I mean? Now, so in the end, um, I just went to Dean Garner to inspire. This is in the September 2019. And I just said, listen, like, I'm looking to fight. I messaged them actually on Instagram. I'm looking to fight. Why did you want to fight though? I because... just, I always wanted to fight, you know, yeah. since I was, since I left, um, since I left Everton. I always wanted to fight. Yeah. So I always wanted to do boxing or something like that because a lot of me, the black side of my family, a lot of them were boxers and they were naturally gifted at it. Yeah. Do you know, it was like a gene. My dad boxed and, and my uncles and my cousins and stuff. So I knew I had it in me because I was athletic, but I didn't have enough time or enough confidence growing up especially to pursue it. And then when once I left Everton and I thought about doing it, there was the fear there and the fear was holding me back. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why aren't I doing it now? Yeah. I said I wanted to do it and my excuse was football, I yeah. can't. Put it off so now bit. it's like, let's see then. And I yeah. kept, there's something always holding me back. Yeah. So one one day, 2016, 17, I just stepped into my fear and just said, like, I just, I'm gonna do it, do you know what I mean? And I started sparring and yeah, doing them one-to-ones, like I say, and got good. I got good, dead quick. I got good really quick. So he wasn't getting me a fight or anything or thinking I was ready. So I, I messaged Dean and said, can I come into the spire and do a pad session with you and that, some training and you tell me if you think I'm ready because I want to fight. I'll fight anyone, I just yeah. want to fight. And he said, yeah, Sam, come down on a Wednesday night, I remember. Went in, did an hour pad with him. And before I'd even got to the car outside the rocket, he'd text me, um, there's a fight there in three weeks. Do you want it? So I said, yeah. And then it ended up being a boxing fight, but in a MMA yeah. cage because after the after I initially said yeah the guy pulled out and then the one who replaced him said can we just do boxing because he'd he, he was coming back from yeah, yeah. an injury or something I can't really remember the details and I and Dean was like do you want to just do boxing it'll be with the 12 ounce gloves but in the cage and I just said yeah it's sound so two weeks after that I fought I won that and then I was like I'm, I'm, I'm in this now I want to I, I, love, I loved it no it was in Bolton oh was it yeah yeah, so I got the taste for it. I was like, this is brilliant. My mates were there. My girl was there. It was boss. After that, it was just like, yeah, this is something. And after that, I normally go out and I'd have a drink back, yeah. back then. And I, I didn't. I was just like, no, back in the gym Monday. So I was just switching in my head. I wanted to just... Did you have any nerves, of, you know, making that ring walk? Do you know what? Uh, that was me fucking sh- I'd be shit myself, me walking on the adrenaline. So what happened, like, it, as it was coming up, I didn't really feel that many nerves the night before my fight. I come into my girl was living in her mum's at the time and I was living in my mum's so I stayed in there the night before 
And I got there and she'd set her room up like a meditation center. Like she'd done all stuff, like all the, the lights were dimmed and she'd set everything up perfect and she meditated with me. I was like, it was unbelievable. Yeah. That, like I went to sleep that night and I was just like, wow, dude, it, it was special. Woke up the next day, went into Derby Lane. Scanner was on his, the pads with me, little mate Carl. Yeah. So I was watching them. I wanted to just be around that, that atmosphere before we fight. And then Carl was coaching me at the time. So then jumped in the car, we flew up. And not like driving up on that, a couple of little nerves, but not that much. And then we got out the car and the scene, the ladder was fighting straight away. And we looked and he looked and he like, I seen a little glitch yeah. in his eye, you know what I mean? And, and then from that, from that point on, I wasn't nervous. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, I just wasn't. We, 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 we crossed paths and I just, I thought, yeah, I'm gonna. So then we was in the changes, get him, get him, I was sat there, the show started at six. No word of a lie, it's about three minutes past six. And he come in and open the door and said, Luke Powell, you're on in five minutes. So I wasn't supposed to fight till half past. Yeah. So I look and I haven't even got my hands wrapped, which takes about 15 minutes. So we had to wrap my hands dead fast. And I got dead annoyed, like proper annoyed because I had everything planned meticulously, you know, on it for, for yeah, the yeah. six days he start and it proper threw me off. So I got dead annoyed and was started hitting the pads with Carl and was like screaming, like I was, I was lost the plot a little bit. I went into this mad mode and then I went, I don't really remember much then because I was dead angry and obviously nervous. And then I went straight out, fought. I remember the fight and then it was all over dead fast. It was 90 seconds and it was over and then it was kind of back. I was back then sitting with all my mates in the crowd because I was the first fight. So it was quite quick. The fact that I was fighting first, I think that helped the nerves. I don't think it would have been nice to sit in there while awesome. people are coming in with broken noses and everything, which yeah. they was afterwards. It was a heavy show. A lot of people got hurt because it was MMA too. Don't yeah. forget. Yeah, yeah. So people were coming in here, that knocked out cold Cost. and stuff. And yeah, it was heavy. So I come, I didn't get to, I didn't have to experience that. You know, which feeling though when you was when you went out and you said you, it was a bit of a blur mm. in hindsight now looking back or if, like if you was to ever fight again mm. would you like to be in that mode fighting or would you would you like to be a bit more calm going into it probably that i'd probably you rather so I, I, I liked i liked how I, I got proper yeah I, I just went into this I, I did feel and see a different side to me but that's what i'll switch on in a minute is um so yeah i i fought there and just goes back to the question there with thailand sorry i've gone around the world yeah but yeah, after that fight, I just got the taste for it then. And I said, I, I want another fight. So we had another fight lined up. The lad pulled out just due to an injury. And then he said, right, we've got one lined up for you. I think it was the the 18th or something of December, right before Christmas. So I was like, sad. I'm going to go to Thailand for that month leading up and come back the weekend before the fight and fight. That can be my camp. So I did that. But while I was away, the, a week before I was due to fly home, so I still had another week there, Dean texted me and said, what time are you home? And I said, told him the time. And he's like, Sand, I'll pick you up with this. And I was like, Dean, wh when are you talking about it? It's not till next week. He was like, no, the fight's tomorrow. I said, you told me this date. And he was like, no, I didn't, I didn't. So then we looked back on the message and he had. Yeah. So we'd got the date completely wrong. So then that fight fell through and I was devoured about that because I'd like grafted so hard. But in essence, it was still the best experience in my life. And it was great that I was over there in the mode thinking I was going to fight for the three and a half weeks that I was there. And then the last week I was still fighting, but not, not here knowing that I wasn't fighting. So I'll come back. There's no fight. Then you go into the Christmas break. And then we went into lockdown. The, 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 you know, after Christmas, yeah, if yeah. you remember, in March. So I got one lined up again for the end of February. That fell through. So a lot of fights fall through in, in MMA. I, just, I don't know if you've had any. Lads on the, no, I haven't looked. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, uh, lads. People who are listening. No, I'm saying lads on. So yeah, you yeah, fight. Yeah. I don't know if you've had any of them on, but a lot of the fights fall through just for whatever reason, injuries. Yeah. Um, that was the third fight in four months that I fell through. So out of four fights yeah. scheduled, only, I'd only had one. January fell through. And then I was sat there with Mark Scano taking the kids through uh, like a junior two session. Yeah, I was just being used as a, the rag doll while he yeah, showed yeah. the kids. And... I was sat with my knees crossed like in a yoga pose and went to stand up and crack my knee, like snapped in. You know on the McGregor movie? Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. when he's got yeah. him like that, exact same yeah. movements as that. And I just done my meniscus. It just cracked and popped. I went and got a scan off the PFA. Yeah. Um, and and then they said, yeah, my meniscus and went into lockdown, started self fast and then slowly came away the from fight fighting. Stopped. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just I had to make a decision. It was like self fast or fighting. 
and it, I, I, I just chose. That. And if you did go into fighting on that lad, and then you got another injury, it probably stop shed for us as well. Do you know what I mean? So. Do, do, what it was with me knee, I couldn't even sit on my knees. Do you know, yeah. Like I couldn't. Do you know where you you be on your on your knees and you put your ass to your yeah. heels? I couldn't even get ninety degrees yeah. on that. So I thought there's no way I can be kicking and and, and blocking. And, and it was MMA that I had a love for. A year or two later, I did pursue boxing again. And again, what started to happen is the more that I was about to go pro with Tonks, big shout out yeah. to them, best, the best best coaches I could have ever asked for. And they, 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 were, they were all for it. They really backed me with it. But as boxing was doing, as was getting better, like Seb Fast was, was failing, not failing, was like deteriorating. Yeah. Like just even like 0.1%, I could see that I wasn't putting enough of my effort into the, the, the Seb Fast because I was so focused in on, on boxing. Because obviously you can get air, can't you, then fighting. So it becomes your whole, you're just absorbed in yep. it. You can mock, 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 going and getting knocked out. So it's everything to you. Do you know what I'm saying? So it, it was either one or the other. And going into 2022, I just made the decision that like, my life mission is just steadfast. Yep. I'm just giving everything to that. Anything else I'll do is hobbies. I'll still train and that. Still have a spa with my mate or anyone who's fighting. I'll, I'll, I'll get in with them and, and give them rounds or anything because I love it. But in terms of pursuing it as a career you can't do it and, and create a fitness yeah. brand and this podcast is sponsored by blive house financial advisors for high net worth individuals and business owners if you're looking for advice in pensions investments mortgages inheritance tax planning life cover business loans and asset finance then blive house has the expertise for you head over to the show notes on whatever platform you're listening to this on to find out more if you enjoyed this episode make sure to like and follow the page thank you that well, that was a good experience, but another good experience I seen you do, and you was the, one of the first people I seen do it. And then the next minute, everyone's fucking talking about this guy. <laughs> was in that Win Win Hoff? Is it Win Hoff? Win Hoff, yeah, yeah, yeah. Win, yeah, yeah. <laughs> win, 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 win you know, no, but uh, Win Hoff. But I seen that you went there, and then obviously fucking hell, everyone starts talking about him now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And they're still talking about him now, but yeah, he's, what he's was, you actually off. went and done it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? we, we went to Poland, Scano again. He, he, he paid for that. Yeah. Never ever let me pay for it. So I owe him for that because that was the best experience in my life. That in terms of the transformational journey that I went on during that six yeah. days, it, it changed me whole, changed my whole life. And yeah, he, he paid for it. And every time I'd try and give him the money back, he'd be like, nah, yeah. like so that was like a gift, bro. Probably the best gift I've ever been bought. What was it like, lad? Because obviously a lot of people probably want to know exactly what it was like and what you learned from it because just the ice baths alone, the cold showers and stuff like that, it's like a big thing at the minute. Like a couple of my mates are doing it, they started buying them fucking Lumi ice baths in the back garden. Yeah. Got away now for the winter, like 40, fucking get your ice bath back out. But <laughs> like a lot of people are starting to do it, do you know what I mean? And yeah. I, I think it's come from that, I'm not going to say his fucking name because I'm scared to get it wrong. Wim, Wim, no, Hoff. Wim, Wim Hoff, just yeah. you're saying it right, just Wim instead of N. Wim. M, M instead of N. Wim, Wim. Wim Hoff, yeah. Yeah, man, that's Yeah, man. so obviously, that I think comes from there. So what was it like? Yeah, it was, it was it, like it was unbelievable because it only got through on me like three months before. And I remember we were we were in Derby Lane Scout and said, Do you want to come this way off for six days in the mountains, ice baths, walking up the mountain, everything? I hate the cold, lad. Yeah, you said that you do it in your fucking boxes. Then, That's, I do, so heavy, though, it, yeah. See the reason I just asked for yeah. uh, for for cream for clean then because I've got Reynard's disease, so yeah. my hands go white. Like completely white, like the circulation stops and they go white, they go dead completely. And same with my toes. And I hate the cold. I just, I hate it. Like, honestly, I've always hated it. I just always want to be warm. And as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, butterflies straight away. Because I thought, he threw it on me, yes, I know, like, I've got to go. Yeah, can't so say like, no. yeah, so as soon as he asked me, I was like, I've got to say yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah go ahead. Like, how much is it? Never had no money yeah. at the time. And he's like, two and a half grand, I think it was. I was like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Sant. And he's like, I'll, I'll box it and then just give me yeah. back. So I was like, Sant, committed now. And then that was it. Like, there was no going back. Obviously, I would never go back on my word like that. So going there, it was, was with me and four of the lads, four of the scouts, was all, all proper good, good men. And we went there. And when we got there, we got split into, f there was a hundred people on the course in the, in the proper Alps of Poland, like, right to high up in the mountains it took ages to get there we had to fly to prague and then get a bus from prague to the place in poland and then another bus right up the mountains and that and it was snow when we got there like proper belting down with snow and we got there landed 100 people there got split into sections for four groups of 25 
And out of the 25 in our group, there was me, there was us six, but outside of us six, there wasn't a single other person. So how many's left? 18. No. 19. No. So out of 19, 19. isn't it? So out of 19 people, there wasn't You're a single. You're meant to be good at maths. Dylan just stayed at me there. <laughs> It is bad that though. That was an easy number. Don't cut that. But yeah. he was. Um, he was uh, out of the nineteen people. There was only two other people who were American, and everyone else was from a different country. Like so, seventeen yeah. were from different countries, but like eighteen, including America, it was mad because I've never been with that many different cultures, men and women, young and old, all just on this journey together. I'm, how we all started to how we all finished was just, it was night and day in five days. It was, it was unbelievable. You can't describe it. Mark says the yeah. same thing when he goes on podcasts or when people ask him, you can't really describe it. John, it is hard. It, it's hard to say what happened because it won't really sound interesting yeah. or- really, As good as what it was or what it, it just done for you. Oh yeah, yeah. What, what happened to you? It was just all soul searching yourself. You just started to see things and see life differently and it brought up a lot of trauma, actual physical trauma, because we do this, you do breath work slash meditation for the first two hours every morning. So we'd get up and say, but that was off our own back. Then you'd go and have breakfast and then you'd go and sit, you'd lie on the floor, sorry, in a in a, a sleeping bag, 100 people all on the floor and they'd walk around, whim off the first day. They were, all the instructors were playing instruments and whim off just screaming, shouting, and like guiding you through a breath work. You, have you done this breath work on, online never, or anything? No, I've never done this. I've, I think it's him, he's saying like, yeah. breathe in, yeah. breathe out. So he's like, he's repping you out, just like yeah. you would with weights. But you're following his instructions the whole way through, two hours straight, bro, and it's breath work. And you start hallucinating, you start seeing things, you start shaking. It's mad, it's like you're having a fit on the floor. And I cried my eyes out, bro, for an hour straight. Like, bored my eyes out, though. And all the trauma was just leaving my body, all from childhood and everything like that. And I just felt clean after it. I just felt clean as a whistle. Like I just felt it was all gone. Yeah. I could start fresh. I could actually go at life again, just being, I'm just honestly, yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Just like cleaning a glass, a pint glass, scrubbing it spotless, looking on it shining. And you're like, boom, like, that's what I felt like. You've spoke a lot about obviously trauma and stuff like that, but mm. getting rid of that. You must have felt like weightless. It was, bro. Uh, it was. It just allowed me to to, to, to think clear. Yeah. Like brain fog went. My emotions were in check. I could decide what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be around, what life path I wanted to go on. It just allowed me to to, to focus direction, and it, it it just it gave me so much, bro. And that's just one percent of it. Obviously, going up in the ice baths, you do you incrementally increase the time that you, you, you're in the water. So the first day was a minute, second day was three, uh, then five, then seven, then 10. But on the 10th day, on the on the seven and 10, it was in a, a, a lake that was in a waterfall. So because you, it's broken water, so because a waterfall's fallen, it can drop below zero. Well, if you got up, if you filled that up with water yeah. and put it to zero, it freezes, doesn't it, like a lake because there's no water flowing into it. Mm. But constant flow of water means that the temperature can go even below zero. So it was like minus 15 or something, the water, because you were right by a waterfall. And in that was a different level of cold. Because like I say, you've probably the nice baths in football. Yeah. They're like one, two degrees. Well, I, I hate the cold as well. I hate it. But like, they're one, two degrees, bro, and that's cold enough. Yeah. So this was just like a totally new level that I'd never even experienced, even when I tried to do ice baths leading up to it, to prepare myself. Yeah, was you this, getting prepared? Yeah, I was doing a yeah. couple of ice baths. Didn't do many, though. Yeah. Didn't do many, I'll be honest, one or two. Was everyone, when they were there, like, you know, getting in the ice baths and all that, was a few people, like, Scared. dipping their toes all that first? Loads of people, and yeah. then some people were just... Jumping in. Boom, easy yeah. this. Do you know and what then I mean? just encouraged everyone else, just get but in. But no one found the last, that last one easy, that 10 no. minutes in that lake. That was just... You had this thing called aftershock, so when you're in the water, it's horrible, but then you get out... And after five minutes, your body going back from cold to warm, mad things happen. You start but like you shake, well, shake. It? Bands, yeah, but you shake uncontrollably when it was when it was this level of cold. You'd shake, and it was called aftershock. Doesn't so it say it burns fat as well. After the, it, they say it does, yeah, yeah, because your body's heating up. Yeah, so it, it definitely does. But yeah, so 
you go straight from the ice into the sauna. So you're in the sauna, but you're shaking like you're in, you're in the cold for like 25, 30 minutes. Someone like fully took the knock and fainted in that. And one of one, the only one person, the, the, the lad who's from America, Mike. And I felt proper weird as into the point where I was thinking like, I'm going to have an heart attack here or I'm going to faint or something really did. And then seeing him faint and have to get all rushed and that, I was like, oh, yeah, it started to go. Uh, and I had to sit with myself, I'm sitting in the sauna thinking, Everyone's going black here, and it was it was hard, but that was part of the process of the journey. Yeah, man. Yeah, that I, was um, part of it. Sitting with that, thinking, "Wow, life can just go like yeah. that." That that that's what I was thinking. I remember like there was there was, like there was no help to talk about the PFA, like no hand outside. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was no help, lad. You had to go from this lake in barefoot back out up a mountain on gravel. Yeah, which imagine your feet being the coldest they've ever been, and you're walking on stones at the same time. Do you know what I mean? There was just the, not, not, no help. You just had to get yourself out. You had to swim to the side and you could yeah. hardly move. You had to pull yourself out this lake, walk all the way up a mountain, uh, do this horse dance to warm up and then jump in a sauna. And then you weren't allowed to leave the sauna until you started sweating. And it took ages to sweat. Is it, is it designed to break you? Or what's it designed? Like, obviously, I don't the cold water therapy is a thing, isn't it? But, mm. you know, like the little things in between that. Is I think like that's just all his methods. Yeah, I think it must. I actually don't know the answer to yeah. that. You know, bro, it's a good question. No, well, no one I can go know. with an ego. No, everyone's going to make people vulnerable. Ego everyone's going to be in the same situation. So it's, that ice will take yeah. your ego. I, um, because I you, went into the, I think it was the North Sea. But when I, was, I don't know, I don't even want to butcher it here, but I was playing in Gateshead anyway up in Newcastle. And um, South Shields, it's got a beach. Yeah. And my manager took us there and made us go in the water. Instead of training one day, just made us go in the water, but it was like winter time. And I couldn't, I wanted us to do, he said, How long were you in there? He said, two minutes, everyone's got to stay in for two minutes. And then we'll go, go and get fish and chips afterwards. <laughs> my, 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 my oh, that's good though. Yeah, that's what most of but, um, you'd always do. I didn't make it the really? two minutes. I can't even lie. Didn't it, it? No, it was, like, it was, like, it was, it was close to, Tears. I was it was burning. And yeah, I was like, oh, I can't. And your I bones like go cold, don't they? Yeah. It's, I don't know why I might have that thing that you've bones. got to be honest with you because my circulation in my hands and feet is terrible as well. But, but do you know the mad thing though? But that I didn't get rain hard once in whole times in my mouth because so when you do have you ever done breath work? Yeah. Are you running away your hands and your feet single? Yeah. So that's circulation. And rain hard is bad circulation. So when your hands and your feet single, when you do breath work, we do breath work before we done anything to do with the cold. That was part of the process. So I never got it once. Yeah. And now I get it, lad, when I run my hands under cold water for 10 seconds to, to wash them if there's no hot water. I've actually never heard I, about I, I, this I thing. White. But it's weird because my mates got it at the minute. Mm. And I've never even heard about it. it. it it's oh, great. Yeah. It, it, it's horrible, lad. It, it, it feels weird. You, you haven't got really no motion in your hands and that. But just when you're saying there about the cold, only just before as well as an example of this, people can't really... That's why I'm saying it doesn't do it justice when I'm talking about because yeah. I'm saying 10 minutes in a frozen river. And it's like, I know people will think it's hard, but go and do it. Yeah. Like I actually urge people watching, go and try and get an ice bath that's around like one degrees and go in it and understand that this was like minus 10 to 15 and try and stay in it for 10 minutes. Because as you said, after 90 seconds, bro, it's like your whole world's crumbling because you're like, I've got Mad. eight and a half minutes left yeah. of this. Like it was a, the most daunting thing I've ever felt because I wanted to get out so much but I knew no one else got out. Yeah. No one got out. You don't want to be the first out. Like I just didn't want to go home from that experience yeah. thinking I got out. Yeah. So I'm actually feel like my body's shutting down. I'm bad with water anyway because I can't swim. <laughs> so I'm every in every single part of my body wanted yeah. to get out. And like I say, it doesn't do it justice, lad. What what goes through your mind? Yeah. I, I just urge someone to go and do it. Go and go and get in a frozen lake safely. Go and do it and try and last 10 minutes. You've and, been on like... And that, that doing that, coming home, now when I did that, yeah. was part of the process of like believing in myself and, and, and the power that you hold within yourself that you can actually do anything you put your mind to. And that, that opened up a whole new portion of my brain that allowed me to visualize and then succeed with a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it transformed my life. So we're going to go on to Shrev Fast now. And obviously, I said it before at the start, People just call you Shred Fast. No, I don't think people you actually know you as Luke. Do you know what I mean? You are Shred Fast. Yeah. Talk to us about Shred Fast. I mean, tomorrow it is because it's more than just <laughs> obviously a gym. It's like a community that you've built and mm -hmm. like it's it's amazing. So talk us through it. So Shred Fast was obviously 
described the time that I went through in my life, but I, I actually had a, a full breakdown in around 2017 where it was just an accumulation of bad things happening, not taking care of my mental health. Uh, thinking I was training hard, but was training in a totally wrong way with the yeah. lifting I was doing and stuff like that. So I was injuring myself. I was, I, I just wasn't fulfilled in anything I was doing. I was just, I was literally on a, on a downward spiral that was, I never had any hope. I was waking up each day. I remember as I was going into the, the breakdown, the depression was getting to a level where, similar to what I just said about the ice bath, it's hard to explain unless you've actually felt it, which you've yeah. spoke about that you have. But it's like, it's a feeling of doom. It's like nothing's, nothing's good. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the sun can be shining, but it feels like it's raining. I just didn't want to get out of bed. Me, so yeah, so. that's what I was at, lad. I yeah. used to have such a headache, like a banging headache that, I just want, when I'd wake up and it'd be there, I'd be like, it's still there. I want to just sleep and hopefully it wakes up and it's gone. So I'd be looking forward to that night to go to sleep and yep. think, please, please be gone by the next day. So I was getting physical symptoms because the stress and anxiety was that, that much. So I was like that for a number of years. And then I thought I've got, got to do something. I woke up one day and I actually had a breakdown where I felt like I'd lost my mind. It was only quite short lived, about two days where I just, I couldn't control my thoughts. You know what I'm saying? It's like a pinball machine. It's the best way I can describe it. I just couldn't control anything that was going on. It was like, it was erratic, horrible thoughts, just madness. And I thought, I've got to change something. So I bought the secret and started reading that. And I'd drive everywhere just speaking to myself, saying, I feel good, I feel great, yeah. I feel amazing. Just started to implement it. And that book changed my life. I know it's cliche to say, but, and it's so simple, but it did. I just spoke myself into feeling a little bit better to give myself breathing space. As soon as I started feeling better, I started looking into how I was training, how I was eating, how I was sleeping, now all the things that um, make up well-being. Yep. So not just your training, it has to be, what, what am I doing, what I'm putting into my body? I'm a fasting, I looked into fasting, you know, 24 hour, 12 hours, you can do like the 16 hour, the 16, eight. I just looked into all different concepts of well-being and started studying it, but to the point where I just sit there in my laptop and actually like make notes and watch podcasts and stuff well before everyone was doing it, but yeah. well before that this was a big thing. And I was just looking and studying it and really trying to educate myself on it. Um, all the knowledge I used to journal, so I've got dozens and dozens of books in mind, stuff like that. Each year I used to buy a new book and I've just got them all still to this day where I journaled what I was learning, how I was feeling, what type of training I was doing, what my clients were reacting to certain training, like what food I was recommending to eat, what results they were getting from that food. Um, studying cold water therapy, you know what I mean? Meditation, uh, affirmations, started studying massively on law of attraction. Yep. And I just conjured all these notes up and 2019 came and I had to make a decision. I was Evolve Fitness Meal Prep, which I touched on before, that had failed and I was Evolve Fitness. That was me, that was my brand and I thought, Right, I had to go two ways. I had to go Luke Powell, the athlete, and try and be a fighter, or create a brand and try and make like a health and well-being brand and try and change the world. Because this one, I'd created a method, which is what Shred Fast is, our Shred Fast methodology. I'd created that, and it was what got me better. So it was what took me out of depression and 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 that and, and that that. A mental breakdown that I had, it, it, it fixed, it fixed me, bro. And yeah. it was this certain methodology that was all written perfectly. So it worked for you. So yeah. So I was like, I've got to share this. Yeah. So I was always going to share that. But it was like, what way do we go? Yeah. Do we go Luke Pauli athlete and share this? Or do we go call it something and create yeah, a, a community? Yeah. Yeah. And I went with this one after speaking with a good friend, Mike Smith, big shout out to him actually. He helped me decide that. And I decided that. And then I came up with the name Shrev Fast. Again, that was gifted to me by a girl who I know, Jamie. She bought that to me and she said, why not Shrev Fast? I was thinking something fast because it was around fasting and she come up with Shrev Fast. So I went with Shrev Fast, designed the logo, designed the website mm -hmm. and just started pushing out from them. Bro, and it's adapted so much since what it was. We've added so many things, but during that little period, I went away with me, my sister, Helen, who I touched on before again. I went to Turkey on my own with, her and her family. And I just was alone for a lot of the time, just writing this perfect structure yep. for what I was gonna do. Like how I'm gonna manifest this into reality and how it's gonna shape the world, how it's, who it's gonna help. 
I'm going to get it out there and all oh, praise be to God, it's gone according to the yeah. plan that I wrote in that 2019. And that's what it is. But honestly, that's why it can't be replicated and it can't really be, it can't be matched because it's built on pure truth and justice. I read a book while I was away in that same holiday just referred to called Think and Grow Rich. And there's a, a section in it, a statement that you read. And the first part is it I will not engage in no transaction that's not built on truth and justice. And that just stuck with me. It just, I read it and I just thought, that covers all bases. Yeah. If you don't engage in no transaction that does not benefit all the effects and it's built on truth and justice, that that in itself, if your whole life is aimed towards building that and that's the truth of what you're building, you can't go wrong. Yeah. All the right people come to you. All the right doors start to open because you're living in line with the truth. Just touching on like your mentality and your mindset now, after everything that you've been through in your, your dark days, mm -hmm. um, have you found yourself... Now you've created stress for something that you you believe in, something that you're passionate about, something that you're seeing that you, all the people that are coming in, you're seeing that you're helping changing their lives and all that. Have you found your why? And have you found like you're jumping out of bed in the morning and you just want to give back to everyone that's coming in and just help their lot, help I've their lives? I've definitely found me why. I, I know that that it was just it was to just help help people just feel better about themselves, help people give people a little bit of purpose every morning. To as you say, I jump out of bed, but I want other people to jump out of bed as well. I want people to just have a little bit of purpose, especially people who've come from maybe having purpose like yourselves with football. Yep. A lot of footballers do, do the shred fast now online because it just gives them, they feel part of a community. Yep. They, no Dave Edwards. Yeah, yeah. So we stop what he's doing this now. And, and, he, and he loves it. He voice noted me the other day yeah. and just said, whether it's amazing, I actually feel like I'm part of the community, which yeah. uh, he said I do it from me, me garage at home. Yeah. On me smart side, it's probably TV a fucking said, big garage, like. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you said I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm there with yeah. you, and that's what I always wanted to create. Was I always had a vision of you know like single mums, single parents yeah. who genuinely can't leave the house. So say you've got yeah. two young toddlers, they can't get out the house. They've got no one to help them. They might not have family and friends like some people are uh, lucky enough to have. And I always used to think of them. Imagine they can just put the telly on and actually feel like they're in the gym with us. Does that stem from music your own upbringing and your mum? Obviously. yeah yeah definitely i think on some level i've never actually thought about it like that but yeah probably is it's like, even yeah. like the start of the podcast like you said at 13 years old you was never really confident in yourself and you want to feel better in yourself but now what you're doing is is you want enough for everyone else as well so yeah it's like it's if you're going to eat nice food in the restaurant you yeah. want to tell everyone don't you yeah i rather went and had the every steak have you need to go and say like you want to share that good news don't you like you do yeah, and, and that's just how I feel. I'm like, I'm I'm so happy, genuinely happy. Not yeah. out here trying to fake it. And I'm actually happy with who I am. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy with the people around me. And I want to give people a formula that, if done correctly, it can, it can give you that. Yeah. It can actually give you that. It's not, I, I haven't cottoned onto something that's new. Tony Bellew did an interview and summed it up perfect. He said, I haven't reinvented the wheel, yeah. but it's the way that I'm doing it. And it's different from everything else. So it just makes you feel like, once you do a step fast, you feel like I'm in that 1%. I'm quite unique because I know no one else is working like this. Yeah. I always say to the subscribers, because they do it, a lot of them do it in the gym, but like they, they do that, they go in with the phone, earpods in and do it. And I say, look around the gym, I say this on the workouts. Is anyone working like this? No. Yeah. Because they're not. They're mm -hmm. drenched in sweat, big puddle of sweat around them and everyone else is just going through the motions. And I'm like, you're putting yourself in that 1%. You're doing what these people aren't willing to do. And and that folds on into other uh, yeah. other areas of life. It just does. It it has to. You feel mentally better after you've done a, a proper workout. Hundred percent. Telling you. Like, telling you. I mean, you, you, you. You just got to come down and do yeah. it. I think no, you've I'm mentioned on on your socials quite a bit. To be fair, about well, that earlier in the podcast, you said like you started your business, but you 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 didn't know exactly where you wanted it to go. Yeah. But I follow you on socials, and it seems like you've got a real purpose. You want to be the best in the world. I think yeah. to quote your words. Yeah, the, uh, it, number one, number one fitness program in the world. I just I want to be, I want it to be, the the number one fitness program in the world. And the only reason I want it to be number one is because that means we'll reach the amount of people that I feel that it deserves to reach. Not for no no variety, and the whole reason that if you see the brand at the minute, it's it's a team now, isn't it? It's not just me. Like the way you said, I'm not still known as Chef Fast, but it, it's the team. Everyone knows yeah. the team now, it's a culture. And that's what I always wanted. I don't want everyone to be like- it, You've made it, that clear you. as well, though, to be fair. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm yeah. saying. So when, as it gets to the places it's going to yeah. reach, it won't just be me, it's going to be the team. It's going to be a community. In, in the end, I'll get forgotten about. Yeah. Just that's like everyone in life, it'll just be Chef Fast. 
That's what that, that's the name that'll reach the ends of the earth, in my opinion. Not Luke Powell. It's gonna be step fast, and that's how I want it to be. And that carries more weight. And that with I'm only one person, but step fast is is an entity. It's been something that's created and that can go on forever and it can reach so many more yeah. people than one person ever could. So my whole philosophy is genuinely just to be to be the number one in that industry because I believe it deserves to be. Like I actually believe that it's deserved to be, and I know it will be. I've just got to bring. I've just got to bring one thing up. Go on, brother. Because I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was sick. Go on. Um, I think it's your nephew. Yeah. Taking a session. Yeah, the chef fast kids. Talk to me about that because I've never seen a kid taking a <laughs> session before. So he's one of the lad. He's the kid yeah, I was yeah. referring yeah. to who I wasn't yeah. allowed to see. Uh-huh. So you can see why yeah. I couldn't let that happen. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. So he's just. He's embodied me, but he's watched me grow up. Yeah. If you watch him do anything now, he, his body language is the same and everything he does is press up. He, 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 he does boxing and everything he moves because he just, he's watched me do and he's just tried to replicate yeah. what I do and even looks a little bit like me, which, which is mad because we haven't got the same mum or dad. It's not like people think we were brothers or people think yeah. he's my son, but he's not. And he's just watched me and he's just found a love for fitness in, in watching me over the years. He just... I've watched him do 103 press-ups, you know, when he was eight, seven or eight. Oh, but this is no exaggeration. Yeah. I'm talking full chest to floor, lockout, 103. Like, it was the maddest like thing I've ever seen. Watch this session. He's, 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 he's actually like, I've never seen anyone like him in his no. mentality. So confident tonight. Just shows how important role models are, though, doesn't yeah. it? Does because you could have, he could have been watching you, as you say, in the, in the yeah. hospital bed, and, and it could have been slightly yeah. different for him, but obviously you've... you've Help mold him and shape him into, into what and again he's got an amazing dad as well yeah. just like i said with joe so i'm i only enhance it yeah yeah he's already got an amazing dad he's a role model he's because his dad was basically a role model to me too because yeah. he was my sister's boyfriend yeah. since i was born i can remember that he's always been in my life so i always looked up to him big strong he's always trained so he, he, he he's he's been a main person so i've just been an additive to that he's already had a good strong base to go with and I just came in and showed them a different side as I say he wants to be you ask him now what he wants to do he says I want to be a businessman so yeah please. he sees and he will he will eventually yeah. be a part of what, what what we're doing I know we will but yeah he does the kids online so he does he records a little 20 minute to battle or body weight and we put it up because that's what a fan there's a lot of families now do chef yeah. fast they just buy it for yeah. the one, one subscription there's the whole household so they log in on the smart telly and there's the workout. Netflix. Netflix. He, he, <laughs> That's the next stage. Yeah. Isn't it? I've got to get on the Netflix. What, what's your thing. nephew's name? Archie. Archie is the definition of a product of your environment, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent for that. Yeah. And, and you know the and thing he's about awesome. him. He's a role model. This is what I'm saying. All the kids That's absolutely why I wanted love to bring him. it up because he's a role model for the the, the kids his age and all that as well. One hundred percent, John. Yeah. Like he's people. The, the, honestly, that when he was in school, well, he's still in school, but when he was in like junior school. Yeah. Cause he's been doing this since he was literally seven, eight, six, seven, even a bit younger. And there used to be a queue at school, like waiting for him to come. Do you know when Helen had yeah. dropped him off from the auntie? Yeah. And he'd, Archie, Archie, like he was just, he was the man. Be yeah, he was just the man. Yeah. He just, he just lights up yeah. every room he goes in. And, and, and I do genuinely believe, as you said, not me, yeah. just like training the fact that he's, he, he was so passionate about something yeah. so young, just like when you, you know yourself, you will have probably both yeah. been the best at football in your in your year or your school. Yeah. And it's like, you're, you're the man, aren't yeah, you? Because you get respect. You get you respect, get respect. Yeah. The kids love yeah. you. Oh, they, they're the best at that. He, he brought something to the table that was different. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Like no one else could do what he was doing, no. like you say. So he's special, man. And he, he adds an, a, a unique perspective to the program too. Yeah. No one else was doing Unbelievable. that. But the mad thing is though too, you've got three generations with yeah. that. You've got him, me, and his mum. Yeah, and yeah. we're all we're all yeah. chef fast instructors. Do you know what I mean? He's 14. Mm. I'm 33. And my sister's 50. I, I, I don't want to quote <laughs> your, your Instagram too much, but that just shows anybody can, is, which is what it, you're does, slogan, isn't it? It does, it? lad. This is what I'm saying, but there's not one thing you can find about the brand that I'll be stuck for words on. Yeah. Everything is the truth. Everything about the brand is the truth. Anybody can, do you know what I mean? Anybody can sell fast. Anyone can be part of this. Yep. Doesn't matter if you're big, you're small, small. you're slim, you're big. <laughs> it doesn't matter your age. Like I say, we've had people in even in the classes, which is a hot room as well. It was sixty plus. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're not in they're not in shape. They've never seen, but they're in there just feeling that community. Yeah. We've had people who are coming in and losing seven, eight stone in a year. It's just anyone can get started. A lot of people are scared off by my Instagram and yeah. sweating, like, like blood, sweat, and tears type of vibe. But as soon as they come in, every single person says the same. I wish I had started this yeah. a year ago. Because there's a great quote that says, with anything that you do, the best time to start was a year ago. The yeah. second best is today. No, no. It's just, it's so true. The best time to definitely start was a year ago, where, even if it was this podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the first day you started, the best time to start was last year, wasn't it? Because yeah. you'd be a year in. You'd have made loads of mistakes. You'd be like, it's, it's always that. So the second best is to just do it now because it'll always be, I'll do it when. I'll do it when I get a bit fitter. That's a mad one that we always get. I'm going to get a bit fitter first. Yeah. And then come. How are you going to get fitter? Just gonna get you do, fit. it, do it now. That's just going to yeah, get you yeah. fit. That's, that's what we're going to make any sense. Yeah. I get what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to embarrass themselves, but I just say to them straight away, no one cares about yeah. you because they're trying to not die. That's what our gyms <laughs> are like. It's like the, yeah. you, you're worried about your, you, yourself. You're like, right. you're, you're gasping for air. You're coming up for like, you're definitely not worried about him not yeah. finishing his reps. You're like, I don't, like, I'm doing Everyone's my thing. journey, aren't they? I'm, but not even that. I'm saying that don't worry about him. It's actually the opposite yeah. of that. Everyone's lifting each other uh, yeah, up. Yeah, everyone's can come to each other, yeah. They are. Yeah. Once you do catch your breath, you look around, anyone's struggling. Yeah. You're like, yo, come on, lad, you got this. Another couple yeah. of reps. Another, like, it's, that's, again, that goes back to the community aspect. And, and you need that, don't you? You need everyone encouraging you. You don't understand the power of that, yeah. though, too. You know, we speak about Archie. Yeah. But you know, the power of just having high performance around you as a yeah. business owner is... is Massive. It's, it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, you, you can't put it. You can't put a value yeah. on it. It's when you've got people who they're pushing and it's a healthy competition. You literally you're competing against each other in a healthy manner. You want the other one to beat you so yeah. that you can try and beat him back. Yeah. So say for example, we do a burpee arm wrap, which is just ten minutes as many burpees as you can. And um, my first initial one this time last year was one six seven, and then just the other day I got two o four, and Joe who, who had the record was. 222 and then Harrison has just beat it yeah, 224 and so it's just someone's going to beat that next time aren't it's just, now Joe's just target. come back from Thailand today and he's literally today and he was like lad I'm, I'm going to yeah. beat this thing you know this week you know like that yeah, yeah. is and him coming in and you might think that that just sounds a little bit corny a little bit stupid that he wants to be babies no, how's not. that going to help yeah. him lad you being prepared to go in and suffer like, yeah. like I said I've said this a few times in the podcast but Go and try and do 200 babies in 10 minutes yeah. before you sit there and like underestimate the, the difficulty of that. But then imagine if you're the type of person who can do 230 babies in a minute, you've got a certain mentality. Yeah, yeah. And you're telling me that that doesn't fold over into every walk of life as a father, as a partner, as a business owner, as a friend. You're prepared to suffer like that. You'd be prepared to suffer for the people around you. Yeah. Best believe that. Because that and that's what I'm surrounded by is like soldiers, women and men. I'm not referring to that just as men. The women in our community are soldiers. Yep. They're willing to suffer with you. You put their hand out to you and lift you up and then vice versa, you do the same for them. You'll have good day, you'll have bad days, but on your bad days, you've got enough people pulling you up okay. on their good day. And then it swings in roundabouts. They yep. feel like shit one day and you pull them up. And that's the power of the community and the synergy that we create. Boss lad, what's the vision then for, for Shredfast? <coughs> for anyone who's, who, who hasn't already seen what you're doing? To keep growing in terms of reaching more countries now on the online. The online is the main focus. That's the online because that can reach anywhere, yeah. can't it? And you can do it from anywhere. That's the old concept. As the global, as it, as it starts to go global, we look at what countries are predominantly using the program and look to create locations in them, in them countries. And that will, that'll just breed more high performing people and help more people. I've got a set number, like I shared a lot with social media, as in the the, the fitness, uh, the brand side of stuff, but there's 90% of stuff I don't share. And I've got all certain yeah. goals, numbers, and everything in my mind of what I want to do. But I believe that your true goals should always be kept to yourself because that's where they hold the most power. So I've got certain numbers and the amount of people I want to reach and help, but I'll always keep that to myself. And, and then when I hit it, I may then, then say, but it's just to continue to grow and organically though. So the social media's gone really well at the yeah. minute. Or oh, please be to God again, just purely organic. Never in my life, hand on heart, God is my witness, never paid for uh, followers, anything yeah. like that ever. And just because we're pushing out the 
the the the consistent content, which is helping people, you know, like tutorials yeah. and community fears and warehouse to follow. It's just starting to really grow yeah. now, and so is the rest of the team, as I mentioned before. Some of the team are going up 30, 40,000 followers in the space of a month. Yeah. Just because they're pushing out the same content, we're all in line, the brand's all singing off the same hymn sheet. And so, providing value as well. Yeah. So then I just want that to grow, reach more people, help more people, more people join the movement. And we go from there. Got I've got visions of creating youth centers and, you know, all based around the yep. self fast philosophy and helping kids and giving back to the community, giving back to the city where I'm from, Liverpool. Man, I love this city. I went through points of, not hating the city, but disliking the yeah. city. Because as you say, product the environment, when when I was in, in a dark place, I was thinking it's cause I'm here and it's not, it's not. It's got the most amazing people in this city in the world, I think. I and agree. It's just where you go. Yeah. It's who you spend time with. And you don't have to go to these places that people ridicule yeah. or that people hold at the, the height of the reason for the downfall of the city. So say for example, the nightlife. A lot of bad stuff happens, don't you? People get hit, yeah. people get killed, etc. You don't have to go out. Don't go out. You don't have to go there. Oh, but all my mates are going out. Yeah. So what? So what? You're, you're a grown ass, yeah. like you're, you're an adult. Yeah. Make your own decisions, you know what I'm saying? Don't go to these places. Yeah. Like you go to these few places again where everyone's, I've got the best clothes on, I've got the best shoes and I've got the best watch, I've got the best, don't go there. Yeah. And then you won't be competing with them. Just don't go there. That easy. Yeah. Go Nando's. Yeah. And if the people who you're around aren't willing to say, yeah, let's just go for a nice, humble bit the of right food. People. They're not the people yeah, that you want to be around anyway. So this city is amazing. But when I would yeah. give everything, I'll pour everything back in. As soon as the time's right and I've filled my own cup, I'll pour it into yeah, the yeah. city as much as I can and help in any way I can with anybody who's a part of this city. Especially the youth. I want to help like fight gyms. I want to help football teams. I want... I already sponsored a footy team and nice. stuff, Archie's team. Yeah, yeah. Got yourself fast on their tops and stuff, but. You must all be fucking ripped. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know running through everyone. Do you know what? They actually are all a gang of little animals, <laughs> to be fair. But um, yeah, like that, that's what I want to do more yeah. of is like I say, create create youth centers and and just just give back as much as we possibly can to the, to, to the right people. I'm not really a fan of just general charities. Yeah. yeah. I, I never feel like the money's getting to the right place. So I'd like to create my own. Yeah my own funnel and, and make sure it, it reaches the kids and reaches our, our community because a lot of people are talking about, say for example, wars, Ukraine, this and that. Like, like these, there's bad things going on in our city, you know, that people are just skipping over them, not turning the turn a blind eye yeah. to. There's kids who, who haven't got food. We need to take care of our city before we start worrying about what's going on in the rest of the world. Jordan Peterson said a great quote, he says, before you try and change the world, look around your own home three times. You have people out there trying to change the world who can't even make the bed. Again, it sounds insignificant and small, but it's not, brother. Yeah. You've got to like take care of your own environment. Take care of yourself. Get yourself okay before you start preaching to others. This is what you see a lot of on social media. But then not only that, then make sure that your people around closest to you before you start trying to help other people. So many people neglect their own family and their own their own well-being of their own family and their immediate people to go and help other people. But then they forget them, but they're the ones that matter. Take yeah. care of them first, then start to focus on them. And then as I say, once they start to get a little bit of recognition, they jump out the city. Oh, I'm going there, I'm going to go to go and do why not? And then let's out the city yeah. then. Let's create like some some nice environments for the for the for the people within the city to go because without the people in the city, we we we'd be nothing. We're working class, hard working individuals with a lot of misguided passion. A lot of the kids are so talented in football, boxing, dancing. Yeah. So much talent in this city. It's off the charts, but it's misguided, bro. It's it's going, it's they're being funneled into the wrong things. They're being guided into these wrong things. And if we can turn that funnel around and direct them onto a good path, these generators, like I said before, you generate, yeah. you see these kids just buzzing with energy, don't they? Yeah. They're buzzing with it. They've got so much talent and potential and they end up in jail. Isn't it God? And you're like, they, they had so much potential, yeah. man. Or they end up like dead. Mm. And it's like, if they just had that, a bit of guidance, a bit of direction, man. Yep. They could have been so special. They could have really excelled uh, and, and changed the environments for not only them, but the loved ones, the families. I always believe in changing the paradigm of your family. And I know I've been that person for my family, but it's like if your family generations have been the same way and then it takes someone to say, nah, no, I'm going to be different. I'm going to change the mold. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm going to become 
a little sort of difference. And then hopefully then the trajectory of your family line then goes in an upward direction from that point. And there's so many, there's so, there's so much potential for that within the city that say 20 years down the line, we could have the best city on the planet. Yeah. We, we could. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Think about the footballers. You got yeah. like Gerard and Wayne Mooney, just for an example. Look how t- look how like monumentally successful they were. Both from Crocky. Yeah. Heighton and Crocky, like they're just from the estate, playing for either side. That's what we've got in our city. We've we've got that. And it's not a coincidence that we continue to push out these like exceptional players. They're always coming through the ranks, aren't they? Yep. It's just about catching them at the right time setting some good structure in place. As you mentioned there with the PFA, maybe one criticism would be is to, why don't they create something like the own, the own program of developing mindset and stuff? Yeah. Do you know why you didn't, imagine instead of going and studying something that you hated, like I did, we did, I think we did sport B-Tech. I, I wasn't interested in that did, at all. Yeah, B-Tech, why not? Why not? Why not teach them? Why not imagine them doing like a full day of mindset? Yeah. Imagine how good that would be, no, bro. No. Like it, like learning about like money, yeah. finances, um, like mortgages. mental health, yeah. mortgages. Yeah, where to, where to, how to move your money, how yeah. to take care of your money, how to generate different streams of revenue, proper life skills, and yeah, and then like I say, even visualization, yeah. manifestation, uh, affirmations. If you're religious, prayer. Yeah. Imagine being taught all these things, and at, at at that pivotal age of 16, 17, 18, then leaving, you get the knockback. But and you've, it's like, you've got all that. You've got all that. Learned. You've not only been a high performing athlete yeah. for two two years, you're also equipped with a mindset to go on and basically put funnel that into whatever you want. The most because best thing, the mindset. Bro, if you if you've even got a scholarship, like you can say your opinions on it, you're the same type of person, aren't you? You've got something, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. If you if you've done a scholarship yeah. at a pro club, especially at an academy like a Premier yeah, League yeah. club or something, then you've you've got something. You've got a bit of You've definitely got something to offer. Otherwise, you wouldn't have even lasted that long. So if you can equip them with the correct mindset at that age, I feel like the world's the oyster, yep. regardless of football. And also, after football, though, too, you, they won't go through the same struggles that mm. they, 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 they seem to go through to this day. I've still got friends in football, as you will, both. And you see them struggling as their career's coming towards yeah. the end, don't you? You see them, like, what are they going to do? They might be okay financially, but that's only gonna last. For do a they certain. actually understand life? Really, have they had no. enough life lessons? As we spoke about before with the PFA, I've never known any industry in the world to mollycoddle uh, human beings the way football does. They can't be touched. They can do whatever they want, and 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 the club will look after them. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They could they could get into the worst trouble ever, and the club will make something happen for them, and and it's okay, and they've. The financial advisors come in and go, just give me your money and I'll put it into all this. Yeah. So they done yeah, there's financial secure, but did they even know what the money's in? No, did they even know how stocks cool. work? Did they even know how business works? What are they actually gonna put the energy into? I'm not talking about how are they gonna financially grow. But how what are they actually gonna put the energy into? What's the day's gonna consist of once football stops? But, but wait, what's the why? Yeah, because yeah, well, you need to wake up in the morning but, but, and want to really, do what, is, what what is the why? Yeah. What what's what's your Cause that's what I what think do you, what do you, as, as you, you, so you've retired now, what do you get up each day? What, what motivates you? Um, I'm quite business orientated as well, but I've done some bad jobs prior to that to, to figure that out. Mm. Um, I was laboring for a while. I, I simmered myself at home and bargain. I realized that it, that wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, I had a bit more to offer, but yeah, as you say, the, our, our previous guest, you got that routine, you got that regimentation of like kind of being told what to do all the time. You need to go out there a little bit and find out what you want to do yourself, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult when you're in when you're in the process. I know what you're saying about obviously being mollycoddled and stuff like that. Um, I feel, but like you said, I feel like you need some trauma to find out what you what you what you're capable of and what you want to really. The, go the dangerous do. thing is though the trauma that we're referring to to experience that trauma. At the age of 38, 39, is very it's detrimental. Late. Yeah, it's, it's late, late. man. Yeah. Late. That's what you call a midlife crisis, yeah. isn't it? Everything finishes and it's like, wow, what, what have I been doing? I've been in this dream world for 15, 20 years now. What do we do now? And that's a scary place for people to be in. And I, I, I would always offer as much 
advice to those people as I can, and the, the advice would be to, like what we spoke about yeah. in this podcast, is find a purpose. But for people who are still playing now, who might be watching this. You need to start now. You need to start now, man. You need to start like a side hustle or a year. Just start planning. Uh, just, yeah. just start doing something. Just Cause, like anything. Because even if you're anything. really wealthy, yeah. just a purpose, whether that was to help you children, can, you say, be, for example. You can be so wealthy, but then, like you said, you start having that 30, 39, that's when the divorce has happened. Mm. But Luke, thank you very much, mate. Really well, appreciate humble. it. Shred fast. Luke, both the same. <laughs> thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. it, boys. Thanks for asking me to come on, man. It's been really good. Thank okay. you. Cheers, mate. Nice one.